Okay, I would like to go to the second presenter, um, uh, which is uh, Margarita Eriksson from Sweden. We have a, a Swedish example. Margarita is a, a, a physical therapist and a nurse, and she works at the de um, uh, Department of Public Health in the region of Norrbotten in Sweden. And you're going to talk about a physical activity pres prescription as a component of uh, strategies within guidelines for preventing of diseases. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this conference. I'm very pleased to be here and to represent the Swedish physiotherapists and also the Professional Associations for Physical Activity, IFA. Uh, does this work? Can I change pictures with these slides? Okay. Was it off? Make it Thank you. Uh, I will tell you a little about Sweden. It's a rather large country. We have 21 county councils divided into six regions. And each county country is responsible for the health care and have the local self-government. We have the primary health care centers and the hospitals. And, uh, oh, I work in the northern region. It's the four northern parts of Sweden, uh, more than half the Swedish area, but we're not so many people, about one million. Most people live in the south of Sweden. Uh, this moment to, to uh, promote physical activity in the population started in uh, 2001, and the Swedish National Institute of Public Health started a national program. Many tourists and organizations took part in this program, and uh, one part of this program was uh, development of methods for physical activity prescription. And uh, a pilot study started at 12 healthcare centers in four county councils. And uh, the result was promising, so the implementing process started. And now the physical, this model of uh, working with physical activity as treatment in healthcare is implemented in all county councils in Sweden. Uh, I will tell you a little about these associations for physical activity. Uh, it was founded in 1998 and it is an independent sub association of the Swedish Association for Physical Activity and Sports Medicine, very long. And it's a section within the Swedish Society of Medicine, but it's open for all health professionals. And it's a non-profit non -profit association. The main goal of IFA is to provide healthcare professionals with a scientific handbook called Physical Activity and Prevention and Treatment of Disease, FIS. And we are very, very proud of this book. It's a scientific handbook and it's used as an evidence-based tool for healthcare professionals uh, in physical activity counseling and when prescrib prescribing physical activity. The book also contributes to the implementation of the National Board of Health Welfare National Guidelines for Methods of Preventing Disease. I come back to that later. Uh, three very important people is three professors who have been editors for this book, Agneta Ståhle, Maria Hagströmer and Eva Jansson. They have done an comprehensive work in this. Uh, the first version of FIS was published in 2003 and FIS to 2017 is the third Swedish uh, version. It was translated into English in two, uh, 2010, and we have also uh, popular versions for sports instructions and for uh, the public, general public. The latest version was published just one week ago. Uh, this update took, has taken four years to complete. It was a large work and more than 100 authors have been involved in this work. Mostly physiotherapists and physicians. And uh, some of the chapters, 33 chapters, are uh, available online, not the whole book. Uh, the FIS has been founded by uh, the National Board of Health and Welfare in Sweden and the Norwegian Directorate of Health. And the important in this latest version is that the scientific evidence uh, was set according to the GRADE method. And I saw in the program that GRADE is a topic later this today. Uh, FIS consists of two parts. One general part that covers 20 chapters 
concepts and definitions of physical activity, effects of physical activity, physical, physical activity as prevention and also recommendation for different groups, and the physical, physical activity in different conditions, what to know about physical activity and drugs, and so on. And it's also a specific part that covers 33 different diagnoses in different, eight different areas. And you can see that this, there is most diagnoses that we meet in the healthcare. So it's a very, it covers very much this book and we're very proud of it. Uh, each chapter is uh, structured similarly. It starts with a description of the disease, and on the first page is a short summary of the recommendation. The chapter uh, is very long, but at the end, the last page, there are a recommendation with the most important uh, information, so it's easy to find for the prescription. Uh, in that case, it's asthma. And you can see what's about to prevent asthma by physical activity. What's the best effective treatment for asthma? Is it something to consider? And how does this recommendation, specific recommendation fit with the general physical activity recommendations to prevent other diseases? And you can read more in the whole chapter. There is also uh, a clarification of intensity of how strong the evidence for the recommendation is. And next, physical activity. Uh, this is a tool for when uh, healthcare professionals should prescribe physical activity. And the Swedish model is an individually adapted written advice with follow-up, and follow-up is very important. And the recommendation is then based on the first book. And what is unique with our Swedish method, all licensed healthcare professionals can, with adequate expertise, can prescribe for LEPAP. But you know, the prescribers uh, has to have knowledge about the health, patient's health condition, diagnosis, and how physical activity can be used for prevention and treatment of diseases and also have knowledge about the method, of course, and knowledge about motivational interviewing and the behavioral change process. So it could be physicians, nurses, physiotherapists, and so on, so who can prescribe for. Uh, the counseling and prescription are individualized, and this is also important and based on the patient's circumstances. And it's very important to know about prior exper experience and what the patient think is fun and possible. It's a key factor for increase and follow the ordination prescription. And it starts with the current physical activity level, of course. And on the written prescription, it should be stated the dose and the type of physical activity. And goal setting is, of course, very, very important. And the patients and the prescriber discuss and have a dialogue and, and set up a goal. It could be walk three kilometers, lower the blood pressure, reduce pain, play with children, grandchildren, and so on. So, but it's very important with a goal. Here, the physical activity is a treatment. And this method uh, can faci facilitate people being more physically active by bridging the gap, the gap between healthcare and the activity organizations. And we cooperate with many different activi or activity organizations, you can see, patient associations, sport associations, private fitness centre and so on. And very important people are far coordinators. Mostly it is uh, physiotherapists. Uh, they are at the healthcare centre, so the clinic, at the hospital, and uh, can be a support for the, uh, other professionals and also facilit facilitate this work with uh, physical activity on prescription. 
There are local variations in Sweden how this uh, method uh, can look. Sometimes the far coordination is at the activity organizations, uh, or both, in both. But uh, for promote physical activity, daily physical activity is a central component. And this picture summarizes the Swedish model. And you can see that individualized patient-centered counseling is central follow-up, and the evidence and the recommendation is based on FIS. Does it work? Uh, recently, a uh, systematic review of uh, some six, uh, five, you know, six uh, studies of the Swedish model of physical activity on prescription. And the review shows that uh, Swedish physical activity on prescription probably increased the level of physical activity in adults who are insufficiently active. And it's three or four in the grade system. We need more research, of course, but it's promising. What we know from this years, we know that uh, this method increases physical activity, but not for all patients. The compliance is good, about 60% follow the, the prescription. It works in primary health care, but we have to do research, research in hospitals, we use it in hospital, but we know, don't know so much about the, the results from there. And we have to do results in children. It is cost effective, and we know that for coordinators, physiotherapists mainly, are very important in this, in this process. We also know that implementing new methods takes time. It is still an ongoing process. And we have to increase the user friendliness for, for help the, the prescribers to do this easily. And we have uh, developed an uh, electronic short form of FIS, who we wish to integrate in the electronic case record systems. But we aren't there yet, but we hope to do that rather soon. And. Uh, Finally, I will tell you about this guidelines from the National Board of Health and Welfare. And uh, this guideline is rather unique, I think. It's, we have uh, guidelines for specific uh, diagnosis, but this gives recommendation how to support patients to change unhealthy lifestyle habit. And there's uh, four lifestyle habits included in this guideline. Insufficient, insufficient physical activity, tobacco use, unhealthy diet and harm from alcohol use. And we know those uh, unhealthy uh, lifestyle habits uh, uh, cause rather much unhealth, non communicable diseases. And the priority groups in this guideline is adult at risk, and you can see it is uh, people with manifest diseases, with risk factors for CVD and so on, and uh, different disabilities, and also, example, low socioeconomic. We know the health is poor in that groups. Uh, other important uh, groups are uh, adults before surgery. We know the complications can be half so much if people stop smoking and stop drinking six to eight weeks before surgery. And uh, there are also, also recommendations for women in pregnancy and for some recommendations for adolescents and children. But mainly it for the, the adult population. And uh, the key recommendation in this guideline is based on counselling. And for insufficient physical activity, the recommendation is counselling or counselling with adjunct of physical activity on prescription and adjunct of pedometer or other activity meters. And in all this also, follow-up is very important. 
Yes, I think that was my last slide. I take a speed presentation. We have not so much time. So, thank you. This is a picture from the northern part of Sweden. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Winter. Thank you very much for your, your presentation. You emphasize the, the importance of physical activity in yeah. the context of all healthcare settings. So I think that's very yeah. important that you that you've addressed that. So I would like to applaud you with the uh, with the initiative. Uh, we've got time for a couple of questions. Thank you very much, Margaret. <coughs> very interesting presentation. Uh, I have two short questions. One is, is this system that you uh, installed, is it fully paid by the public healthcare system? This is one. And the second is how you manage the relations between different healthcare providers within this system. So physios against uh, sport, sport and exercise and nurses and, and uh, mm -hmm. medicines. How, how does it work? Uh, okay, your first question was economic. Yes. Uh, when the, the patients are still in healthcare, uh, there are special taxes for healthcare. When uh, the person came to the activity organizations, they pay taxes by themselves. It's not uh, provided by the healthcare. So the patients take the cost, they, yes. They the cost. Yeah. And your other question was how... How did you manage the relations between physios and other healthcare providers who are all prescribing this? Uh, it's not so easy. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. <laughs> yes, but we have uh, we have uh, education in this model for every professional, for for uh, physicians, for physiotherapists, for nurses. So, so this is a concept we we teach to to all. And the, the four coordinators as a healthcare center is a support for other professionals. So we try to cooperate. And the physiotherapist has uh, deeper knowledge in this area than nurses, but uh, exemplary nurses who work with diabetes patients can pro uh, promote physical activity, but sometimes need help for the of the physiotherapists when the diabetes patient has knee injuries and so on. So we have uh, we have tried to have educations for all health professionals. Sport centers. Sport scientists. We don't have this in, in the healthcare system, but there are. We have, of course, in research and so on in this area. It's, it's much research done. Okay. Hmm? Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Any other questions? No. Uh, I'm being told that I should speed up, but yeah, there is a question. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, I have a question regarding the non-health uh, non health, healthcare professionals. If you refer the patient for the physical activity to some fitness club or something mm -hmm. like that, are you sure that they will get the proper physical activity? Uh, There's also, a, uh, I have this, a good question. And we, it, we have uh, systems to... to uh, uh, have quality in this, and, and uh, the sport associations in every county council uh, are producing, uh, what do you say, brochures over the activities in East region. And we try to look at the quality of these uh, activities. But of course, it's, uh, it's not uh, quite easy and a, a large job. But we try to do it. Mm. Thank, you. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so, yeah, thank you.